Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 9th, 2018. First up, this is from Engadget. Microsoft's Deep Sea Data Center is now operational, and you can see by the picture here that this thing looks kind of like a submarine, only I think it's tipped up straight up and down. But it says, data centers are hot, noisy, and usually inefficiently located. Microsoft's solution put them at the bottom of the sea. Following initial prototype testing, the company's years-long project, Natic, it's finally delivering Microsoft's vision of sustainable, prepackaged, and rapidly deployed data centers that operate from the seafloor, yep, underwater. When you reach a certain depth, the temperature is actually quite cold. So if you can either make the electronics be able to handle the water or seal them off, the ones that can't handle the water be able to seal them off. But um, they're also saying the power consumption from this is going to be way less than a typical data center, and they're going to spend the next 12 months monitoring the performance of this. Um, also seeing what's the environmental impact going to be to it, too. I'm sure if you only have a few thousand of these things going, it's probably not going to make any difference in the uh, cold depths of the ocean. But if we start putting millions of these things into the ocean, it might actually make a, um, make a difference in the temperature and might cause some problems or something like that. So um, they say this sounds, uh, people may think this is kind of a wild idea, but since half the world's population lives within 120 miles of the coast, this might not be a bad idea to do. And the data center uh, uses less electricity, and the electricity that does use is actual renewable energy that's close by. So, And there's a little video you can play in this, too. And as usual, all the links to everything down below. But tell me what you think about this. Having the data centers, instead of being in buildings and have to use air conditioning and taking up land mass and stuff like that, too, just uh, dropping them down under the sea. And they say this one should be able to last at least five years maintenance-free. And uh, since it's a test thing, too, it's not that it's necessarily going to work, but it uh, sounds like a pretty decent idea if they can work some bugs out. At least it does to me. And next up, this is not so much science -y, but just a dream of mine, and it's actually going to take place. The best-selling vehicle ever is making a comeback to the U.S., the Honda Cub. Now, this is a Honda Cub 125. I think the one that's usually sold overseas. This is a Super Cub, actually, the Super Cub 125, the Super Cub 110 is the one that's really popular overseas, and then before that there was just the Honda Cub. But the 125 is coming back into the U.S. as far as the 2019 year model, and it's going to be just below $4,000. And they're also going to bring back this one called the Monkey. I don't know about the Monkey. Uh, <clears throat> I've seen a picture of it, but um, basically the one I'm interested in is the Super Cub C125. And if you want to see a side picture, I'll put the side picture up here. And it looks just like the classic, and now it's got the red, white, and blue American colors. Uh, for this first model year, and uh, they don't say anything about other colors available, at least from the ads I've seen so far, but it's going to be available sometime in October, so if you've got around $4,000 to spend, um, it looks, well, actually, the let's see, the Cub 125 is $35.99, so probably with taxes and title and delivery, everything, it's still going to be like maybe $3,700, $3,800 out the door, but yeah. It's, uh, it's to me, I, of all the classic motorcycles, and it, it actually started in the 60s with that uh, um, you meet the nicest people on a Honda, and, uh, you know, the Beach Boys sang about Honda, Honda, my little Honda. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of the one that really started the Honda revolution in the United States. So, uh, yeah, everybody else in the world's had access to it forever and ever, but uh, they stopped selling it back here, I think, maybe in the 1980s or maybe even before that. But they're bringing it back, so I'm very happy about that. So let me know your thoughts about that, or does it really even mean anything to you at all? But uh, I would not mind, really, maybe in the future, if I have a little bit of trouble holding up a regular motorcycle getting a little Honda Cub. It's kind of the best of uh, both worlds between a motorcycle and a scooter. It's kind of a step through motorcycle. <clears throat> and last up, this is from Vox.com. Uh, if you remember, if you've ever had sociology or psychology classes, you've probably seen something like this. I think I watched it in a, a documentary. I don't know which one it was about psychology or sociology, but it's the famous marshmallow test where they had 90 kids take this test of uh, giving them a marshmallow and saying, you can eat this marshmallow now or you can wait for 15 minutes, and if you can wait and not eat it, I'll bring you a second marshmallow. And of the 90 kids, they uh, claimed that, and, and in this study, I guess it did prove to be true, that they could predict pretty reliably the success in the uh, uh, SAT scores and uh, just a lot of future good things happening for the kids that could delay gratification and uh, things not going so well for the kids that could not delay gratification. Now, that was a very small sample size. And people have always just kind of taken this as the gospel, even though uh, not just was it a small sample size of about 90, but it was also mostly kids of uh, professors of the different uh, universities and stuff like that, too. So 
these were not, you know, just your typical average kids. These were kids of college uh, professors and stuff. Uh, but they also found that there was another study done, too, by the National Institute of Health, where they took 10 times the sample size, about 1,000 kids, and uh, they didn't do an exact replication. They did about a seven-minute delay with those kids, and they only found that it was about half as much uh, predictability as far as the success of the kids as the original first study. And they think when uh, controlled for other factors in the study of these 1,000 kids that it may be just very subtle differences. So it could very well be that two kids from the same family, especially in the same background, uh, even if one kid took the marshmallow right away and didn't get the extra one and the other kid waited and got the extra one, uh, their achievement was close enough that it wouldn't really be determined either way. But <clears throat> my thinking was the fact that I think the basic problem with a lot of adults that have problems with economics, especially their own personal economics and uh, being in debt all the time and uh, different, just different problems of not preparing for their retirement, for example, not having any plan, just expecting to work till you die, um, they say the average person couldn't even come up with a thousand dollars out of their account to bail themselves out if they had an emergency they'd have to end up borrowing money or something but uh, I think it is I think a lot of it is uh, the fact that adults later on uh, cannot practice delayed gratification you you've got the money and you just spend it right away and I realize for very poor people that's not something you can really say because they're spending every money they every bit of the money they have to just survive but for people that are above that level of poverty to where they have at least a little extra spending money but are still not willing to even set aside like ten dollars a week or anything like that I think that's one of the things too. delayed gratification really plays into the fact that these people when they get up into their fifties and sixties just have nothing set aside for retirement whatsoever and are just hoping on the fact that social security will be enough so anyway check it out links below I'll actually have another link to a PBS article on it besides too but this is from Vox and uh, comment and see what you think about it too uh, even if you don't think that this particular test, or if you've seen this test in, in the past and you agree with it or disagree with it, uh, what do you think about delayed gratification, especially in adults later, and how it, how it plays out in their economic future? So that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.